Hey, what's going on? Oh, this is a busy, busy time of year, Josh. This is the this is where the grapes live. This is where the grapes live, right in this little area here. Look, where, see? Why is this good for you know Pinot and Chardonnay production? Well, it's really a matter of of the soil, the elevation, and it's a style of winemaking, essentially, where you let the land express itself rather than creating. Well, that's, that sounds that uh -huh. sounds like what you're doing. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. So this it's would definitely be in the old world style. Old world style. That's right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. All right. That's cool. Yeah. In France, where they know their winemaking, they call this idea terroir. Cultivating grapevines is almost counterintuitive. They don't need rich, fertile soil. Instead, their main requirement is sloped, rocky land. They need water, but also plenty of drainage. To provide just the right amount of sun and warmth, your vines should face south. This means each vineyard has its own microclimate, which creates grapes with their own unique flavor. This area, I mean, the wine tastes different here than if it was just on, like, some other hill or something? It's amazing the influence that soil and place has on wine that's allowed to express itself. This, this area has a certain flavor to it, you know, that, that something down in the valleys does not have. Christine has her work cut out for her. If you've never heard of Virginia wines, it was not for lack of trying. The settlers at Jamestown tried to grow wine grapes and failed. Thomas Jefferson spent years trying to establish winemaking in the U.S. and got nowhere. It wasn't until the 1970s that Virginia vineyards saw any success. Nowadays, researchers help growers pinpoint the right microclimates and fight local pests and diseases. And what is it, a dirt of some? It looks like what, dirt. Well, it's cow manure. Oh. <laughs> but it's been uh, aged in a cow oh. horn. <laughs> Under the you earth. Should have told me, you should have told me before <laughs> no, I. No, no, no. I wanted you to experience it. <laughs> so, um, but it's really like uh, really rich compost. Uh, mm -hmm. Are you going to make a soup or something like well, a consomme with yeah, this giant yeah. bucket? It's, a, it's a, like a tea compost, and they're going to spray it on the ground. But first, I'm going to show you how it's done. You have to stir this with your arm for 20 minutes. This technique is borrowed from a style of vineyard management called biodynamics. It's an ultra-organic style of farming that feeds the microorganisms in the soil as well as the plants themselves. Yes, that's what it is. We want to get the, the centrifugal G-forces. That's right. How long do I have to do this for? Oh. OK. This is like the kind of honest work that is yes, so alien is. to me. So alien. It's, all right, there we go. So this is not, there's no, like, insecticide in this or anything? No, this is the opposite. This is encouraging life. It's encouraging microbial life in the soil. It's concentrated microbes. Just add something special. With a perfect blend of flavors and sugars on the inside, an alcohol-producing yeast covering its outer skin, a crushed grape is going to ferment. Making wine should be easy. Making good wine is not. Wine is one of the sort of fundamental human experiences, you know, like fire and sex, and it's one of the essential human things in the world. Half the pleasure of eating food comes from drinking wine with it. Archaeologists have traced our love for wine back nearly 8,000 years. The earliest evidence of winemaking was found in the remains of a Stone Age house in Mesopotamia. Liquid wine dating back more than 16 centuries has been recovered from a Roman tomb. The right soil and climate will foster vines that will yield fruit for decades.